<laughs> yes, you do need a podcast guest release, and here's why. Let me show you right after this. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Legit Podcast Pro, the show where we dive deep into the legal and business aspects of podcasting and digital media content creation. I'm your host, Gordon Firemark. They call me the podcast lawyer. And today we are tackling a topic that is vital for every podcaster and content creator out there. Whether you're just starting out or you've been in the game for years, why you absolutely positively need a podcast guest release. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. You're saying, Gordon, my podcast is small, or I'm just interviewing my friends and colleagues. Do I really need to bother with something as formal as a guest release? And the short answer, my friend, is yes, yes, you do. And over the next few minutes, I'm going to try to explain to you why and share a couple of stories and give you the tools to protect your show and keep it thriving. But first off, let's get started by talking about what a podcast guest release is. Now, essentially, it's a legal agreement between you, the podcaster, and your guest. It's a document that outlines permissions, rights, and expectations. What the release does is it provides documentation of your guest's consent to be recorded, plus it covers how you are allowed to use the interview, the scope of things, the scope of that consent. Think about how you're going to use it in marketing and promotion and distribution and maybe in merchandise and and things like that. What if you decide you want to put your show behind a paywall or turn your podcast episodes into a book or an online course? Well, a well-crafted release agreement gives you the fullest possible scope of authority to do those things without concern about people coming at you later on. It protects you against potential legal headaches down the line. So why is this important? Well, imagine that you have a fantastic interview with a guest and your episode becomes a hit, right? Fantastic. But then your guest decides they don't like how they sounded or looked or the way they, the way you used a clip for promotion. Well, without a release, they could demand that you take it down. And that would lead to lost content, lost audio, audience engagement, uh, lost advertising revenue if you had sponsors that were expecting that show to stay up, and even potential legal challenges. Or they could see that now you're starting to make some money. So they come back to you demanding a piece of the action. Same thing. And if you don't take it down, they're going to sue you or something like that. Or they just decide they want to mess with you and disrupt your business a bit. Whatever the reason, it messes with the integrity of your podcast feed, your reputation as a creator and a journalist, your reputation with your sponsors and, and uh, advertisers. It's just a bad look. Now, this isn't to say you couldn't choose to take things down if you are asked, but Really, that should be your choice. I mean, after all, you are the one who has built up the podcast. You've invested resources in recording and editing and publishing. It's your show. And actually, that's another thing that the release does. It makes it absolutely legally clear that you and you alone are the owner of the podcast and the episodes in question. Because there's actually a little understood wrinkle in copyright law that says that when two or more people create something together, they are considered joint authors and joint owners of that thing. So unless there's clear evidence of a different intention, that's going to be what happened. Your release agreement is that evidence of the different intention. So let me paint a picture uh, with a couple of real world scenarios. Picture this, you've interviewed someone who shared a personal story, a proprietary information, and later they have second thoughts about it being public. Maybe they talked a little bit, uh, negatively about a family member or someone that, you know, has some sway over their job or something. If they ask you to remove that content and you don't have a release, you have to take down the content. That's the legal advice is going to be just take it down. Now, if it's something that's not very sensitive and you, you know, feel that there's an important reason the story should stay out there, well, you want to be able to control it. And if you have a podcast release form, it's your choice, your decision of what to do. Or consider the case where a guest becomes famous and then their episode on your podcast suddenly has a lot more value. Without the release, they could come and restrict your ability to use that episode to promote your podcast. They could restrict your episode to make money from that. I actually had a situation where my client's guest in an early episode of her show later developed an intense dislike of my client because the client had decided to present an alternate point of view than the guest's. So it's years later, my client is doing real journalism, aiming to present all sides of the story, and now this early guest is demanding not just a takedown, but also that all references to the episode, everything be stripped from the feed, from the website, from the show notes, and everything. 
Well, my journalist trained client thought that was just unacceptable and really wanted to at least reference why the episode was missing. And this guest was not having it. And, uh, uh, the whole thing actually devolved into a lawsuit, and it all could have been avoided if there had been a release agreement signed at the time of the interview. So the way to protect your podcast and ensure that you are free to use your content as you see fit, and that's what it's all down. It's your choice. That's where a podcast guest release comes in. Having an agreement in place gives you the peace of mind. It clarifies that your guests have given you permission to record them, to use their likeness, their voice, their content, uh, the interview across all media forever and ever without any boundaries. And that means that you can repurpose content for social media, for advertisements, for future episodes, even for paid products and merchandise without having to worry about it. Now, look, I've heard all the objections. There are lots of folks out there just dismissing the need for releases. They'll say, oh, it's too formal and it, it intimidates the guests. They won't want to sign. Well, I'd say that should be a red flag right there. But honestly, if it's done right, this is a simple, short document that really shouldn't put anyone off. It can be written in plain language. It just explains what's going on and you're good to go. Or maybe they'll say, hey, I've worked in radio for 30 years and we never used releases. Well, to that, I have two responses. First off, I say, hey, it's a different medium. There are different issues and different rules. Radio is ephemeral. Mostly it's one and done. The, the, the interview happens and it's out there. It's in the ether and it's gone. And with podcasts, a recording is out there potentially forever. Also, what a lot of radio folks don't realize is that there often is a contract. It doesn't necessarily amount to a formal written contract, but the interview is set up in advance by the, the station personnel and the subject, the subject's record label or the publicist or the agent or the manager. So there usually is a paper trail of some sort or an email trail or whatever. And smart guest bookers who work in these environments, they know how to document things, even if they don't use formal release agreement, you know, single page documents. I can tell you there's almost always more than just implicit consent. And implicit consent is that next objection. People say, well, they sat down in front of a microphone. They did the interview. Isn't that consent enough? And I would say, well, it's consent to something. But what exactly did they agree to consent to? Because unless you were careful to get them to agree to a perpetual, irrevocable consent and all that ownership and all the other stuff, well, there's ambiguity there. And I'll tell you as a lawyer, if it ever becomes a problem, that ambiguity is going to work against you, the podcaster. So get it in writing, the lawyer's mantra. Now, you might be wondering, where can I get one of these podcast guest releases? And boy, am I glad you asked, because <laughs> I've got you covered. Just visit http colon slash slash podcastrelease.com. That's podcastrelease.com to download my free lawyer drafted podcast guest release. It's a template designed to provide comprehensive protection for you and your podcast, ensuring that you can focus on creating great content and not legal worries. So that's the, uh, that's the call to action for this episode. Come and get my guest release and, uh, and check that out. And before we wrap up, I also want to extend an invitation to all of you. If you are looking to make a little deeper dive into the business and legal fundamentals essential to your podcast's growth and profit, I'm holding a free workshop. It's called Business and Legal Fundamentals for Podcast Growth and Profit. And you can register by going to event.podcastlaw.net. And, uh, oops, that's not the right, I'm putting on screen. Um, it's not going to show up. Anyway, event.podcastlaw.net. It's a workshop that's designed to arm you with the knowledge and tools you need to navigate the podcasting world confidently. So in summary, whether you are interviewing a close friend or a high-profile guest, a podcast guest release should be non-negotiable. It's about protecting your hard work, your content, and ultimately your podcast's future. Think of this a little bit like safe sex. Practice safe guest. Use a guest release every time with every guest. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for tuning in to Legit Podcast Pro. Remember, podcasting isn't just about hitting record. It's also about creating great content with confidence and knowing that you're on legal, solid legal ground. Uh, download your podcast guest release, join me at the workshop, and let's make sure that your podcast isn't just creative, but legally sound, positions you for growth and profit. Until next time, keep on making great podcasts.